We're going to take a look at a different IR sensor that I found recently for our Arduino projects. So let's go take a look at it now. Hi, I'm Tom Kovicek, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And you know how much I like Arduino. Lawrence Eggering showed me a new IR sensor that is a little bit different than the one, but pretty close. The circuitry is the same. The only thing different is the sensors are on the back of it, and you also have a fourth pin on there where you could have an analog output in addition to a digital output. So we're going to test it out to see how it works compared to the original one that we've been using for all our Arduino projects. And you can see this one has three pins on it and basically the same circuitry on it with the potentiometer. Let's hook this up to the IR sensor project that I did in Arduino Made Easy Lesson 7. Let's go right here. Okay, as you can see right there, there is the breadboard and the fritzing diagram. And the only thing different on this is I'm using a nano. You can see the nano right here. And I have the two IR sensors here and I have them hooked up to the same. I have them hooked up the same way and we'll bring you up to the top of here. And let's get a better picture of this right here. You can see sensor one and sensor two are hooked up to pins five and six, and the LEDs are hooked up to pins 10 and 11. That's the only thing that we really have to worry about here. And in the loop, we have two if statements. One is for the first sensor and one is for the second sensor. If we touch the first sensor, we initiate this if statements. The sequence started becomes one. The leaving sensor becomes number two. And we use flash LEDs, which is the function right here at the bottom, which turns on and flashes the LEDs. And you can see pin five and six go to the sensors right here and there and 10 and 11 go to the LEDs through these resistors right here. So let's see if this thing works. Okay, so basically what we have to do is cover the one sensor and the LEDs are gonna start flashing and they're gonna stay flashing until we cover up the other sensor. So let's see if that happens. So we'll come over here and they're starting to flash. And they're gonna to continue to flash until I cover up the other sensor. And we'll leave it go for a little bit here. And we'll bring my finger over top of this sensor here and it'll stop flashing, okay? Now we'll come over the opposite way and start it from this sensor here. They start flashing again. And once we get it over to here, it'll stop flashing. Now let's see how far it picks up my finger here. And we'll bring my finger in. And you have to get pretty close. Basically, the, the uh, half the width of the breadboard there on that sensor. And we'll bring it over on this one here. And you can see that there was an LED that lit up over here and that shut it off. So basically, it's not very far. Half the width of the uh, breadboard and I'll put the I'll put the distance right up here as soon as I measure it. Now on these one, these these are about the same and 
you know, it has a potentiometer on here. So I'm going to test that out also. But I also have an, an, another sensor that I have hooked up to one of my projects back here that has a greater distance on it. It has a lens. It's enclosed in a cylinder and it has a lens on it to amplify the signal going out and back from the IR sensor. So it's a little bit more expensive, but if you need a greater distance, and I'll show you a picture of it here, the good sensors are available on Amazon for $8.80. This is what I use on my layout. And I see them on here on eBay for as low as $5.80 for the same one. It's E18-D80NK, Obstacle Avoidance Sensor. Now I've seen another one here. It was $6.95. So you have your choice of going to different places to find this one here. But basically that one is the more expensive one. And that one gives you a greater range I think this one gives you anywhere from uh, about 12 inches or a little bit more range on it. I'm going to adjust the potentiometer on here and see what happens. I'm going to go clockwise on it right now. And you can see that it actuated as soon as I went clockwise a little bit. So that is the shortest distance right there. So let that stop and I'll bring this around the opposite way. And we'll see how far that is before it's actuated. So that basically shut it off altogether. So on this one here, the potentiometer just doesn't do anything. I'll put this back where it was. Now I have the potentiometer back right where it was before, right before it triggered it. And we'll see what happens here. Okay. So it's, it must be really, really sensitive because I got a little bit more distance out of it that time. It doesn't seem like the potentiometer has that much of a range on it like these did here. These had a little bit more of a range on it. And these potentiometers here, now that's, that's just one that I checked. I'll, off camera, I'll do some more. I'll put the information on the screen. Here's the information on the sensor I just tested. I got this at Amazon. It's $7.99 for six of them. Most modelers have been putting this IR sensor in between the ties facing up or in a building facing this way, or there have even been modelers who have taking, taken the receiver off and placing it on the opposite end of the track so the beam would go across the track. Now that is a possibility. Also, that's something else you could do. Now with this one here, it's going to be kind of hard to put it underneath the ties. The only place this would be good is if you placed it in a building and shined this across the tracks. Now this one, this one here, it would be a little bit harder to take the, uh, the receiver out of there because it's enclosed in a piece of plastic. I just swapped out the sensors in there and you can see I have the older sensors in there and I'll, I'll put it on right here. All right. Now, we'll come like this. Okay, right there, it's about one and a half inch, one and three quarters of an inch. 
And this one here. About two inches. So these right here are the range on them are a little bit better. So here is the original ones, which is $7.99, the same price, where you get 10 of them. So this one, the, the original ones are even cheaper. So that's even better. But they're also available at a number of other places. Uh, if you want to get them in a hurry, you can get them at Amazon. Now, I just adjusted the potentiometer on the sensor on the left-hand side. And we're going to bring this box in to see how, what range it is. And right there, it turned it on. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's six inches right there. <laughs> Let's shut that one off. <laughs> okay. So we got six inches out of adjusting the potentiometer on the older IR sensors. So the verdict on these IR sensors is this one here, the original one that I was using, I'll give it a thumbs up. This new one that I am testing out right now, <laughs> I'll give it a thumbs down because you hardly get any range out of it. I'm going to stick with my original IR sensors, mainly because I adjusted the potentiometer on three of these new ones and I could not get any more. I couldn't even get an inch out of this. So as far as I'm concerned, these are these are junk. I mean, unless you want to use them for very close proximity, uh, that's the only thing that they're good for. So if you haven't done so already and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell and tell them that you want to be notified. Then you'll be notified of more videos that I put out. And go ahead, check my playlists. You know the drill. Go to the playlist page. There's plenty of playlists there where you could find everything that you need. So until the next time, we'll see ya. And let me put this thing on right here. It's okay. It's flashing already. I must have did that. Okay. So.